Hello you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the final figure in the new X-Men Marvel Legends wave with this Magneto. It's the final one that I have to review in this wave. And then I'm also going to be taking a look at the Build-A-Figure in this video, which is Apocalypse. Now, this figure comes packaged in the same style that we've been seeing with all the 6-inch Marvel Legends. You've got the black box with the yellow highlights. Up at the very top, you've got that X symbol in yellow. And then you've got the Marvel Legends series logo. The figure is clearly displayed in the window box. And then down below you've got the X-Men title and the name of the character. On the sides of the packaging you just have artwork from Magneto, it's the same on both sides. And then on the back of the packaging you have a look at the actual figure, a brief bio in multiple languages, and then down below a look at all the figures in the wave that you need to get in order to complete the Apocalypse Build-A-Figure. Alright, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside the packaging along with the other contents. Now, first of all, you do get the right arm for the Apocalypse Build-A-Figure with this one. And one thing I want to note about this that I noticed in the packaging, they actually had looked like they had tried to tape this, put some tape over this. I don't know if that was done to try and prevent figure swappers from stealing the Build-A-Figure pieces out of it. It's the only figure in this wave I noticed that with, but, you know, it would be nice if Hasbro started taking some steps to make it harder for the figure swappers. Um, I don't I don't think tape is going to stop them but again anything that makes it more difficult is nice and like I said before stay tuned to the end of this video because I am going to be putting together the apocalypse figure and taking a look at that in this video as well Okay, now for actual accessories for the figure itself, we get first two different pairs of hands with this one. So the first pair of hands, which are the ones that are attached to the figure when you first take it out of the packaging, they are done in a translucent purple plastic. This is meant to mimic his magnetic powers. Now I believe that these are the same hands that originally came with the Wonder Man figure. With that one, it was supposed to mimic his ionic powers, but I, you know, I think it is the same hands. I didn't pull out that figure to double check, but I know he came with translucent and purple hands so that's why I'm guessing it's the same ones and you know these are open hands so again kind of to mimic his powers and then the second pair of hands that he comes with are closed fisted and they're just normal hands so you've got just the black paint to match the rest of the outfit he's wearing the black gloves and everything so I am glad that they actually gave us an alternate non-powered pair of hands with this figure because I'm not a huge fan of the purple hands okay and switching out the hands is easy you just pop off the hand you want to replace you've got the little peg on the hand and the hole in the arm now he has these wrist guards which are separate pieces so if you pull the hand off you can take that off if you want to um, just be careful it doesn't fall off and then to plug in the alternate hand you just plug it in and it should fit nice and tight and then they've also included for additional magnetic effects these blue or purple lightning bolts so these are the exact same effects that we saw with the storm figure in this wave those were yellow and these are purple again and this is supposed to mimic his uh, magnetic abilities can't say it really you know I don't really think of lightning when I think of his magnetic powers but nevertheless that's what they've given us and like with the storm these don't really fit very tight on the hand so you just have to kind of play with it and just kind of set it on there but you know it does look like I guess he's shooting out purple magnetic bolts from his hands with these and if you move the figure around a lot then expect those to kind of fall off okay and then finally you get two different head sculpts with this figure so you get the normal helmeted head like we generally see with magneto figures and i like the detailing i like the helmet the helmet looks like it's something you could actually take off the head but but you can't uh, you can kind of pull back those front flaps they are separate from the actual face sculpt but the helmet itself is glued on there and you've got the white out eyes with some red around the eyes and then you can make out his gray eyebrows so overall I think it looks good the helmet itself is just black and then you've got the red trim uh, which I think looks pretty good and then the second head sculpt is an unhelmeted head which is the first time we've gotten that at least from Hasbro which I think is is definitely nice and you've got the white hair uh, not much in the way of wash effect in the hair and then he's got the gray the eyebrows are a bit darker gray color and then I like the skin tone the overall facial expression is not too bad. I've seen some of you compare it to Kelsey Grammer from Cheers and Frasier. Um, you know, in some of the pictures I saw, I kind of got that impression. But, you know, when I see this in hand, I actually think it looks pretty good to how we've seen him uh, drawn in the comics. Now, he's differed a bit over the years. You know, he's been drawn by a lot of different people. But I definitely recall times where he had a, a look like this uh, without his helmet on. 
And switching out the heads is easy. You just pop off the head you want to replace and you pop on the head you want to replace it with and it should pop right on there and it does fit nice and tight. And if you're wondering if you can take that unmasked head and put it on the body of the previous Magneto figure that Hasbro did that was part of that Toys R Us exclusive wave, the answer is yes, you can. Now you do want to be careful. This collar thing will have a tendency to kind of push the head off the ball joint uh, when you turn it. So it may you know come off very easily, but technically you can get it on there and it does actually I think look pretty good. Okay now for the figure itself this is Magneto and what I believe is his most recent costume. I haven't actually read an X-Men title in a while and the last time I read one with Magneto I believe it was wearing the white outfit but I did see a recent cover and it looked like Magneto was wearing the black and red and I like any character that sports the black and red look. I think you know it's two of my favorite colors so US Agent, Night Thrasher, Daredevil, all those guys when they have the black and red on I definitely think think they look good in it and Magneto's no different. I do like the look of this figure. Magneto's had a lot of different looks over the years, some better than others. The worst that comes to mind is that one, that purple one that he wore back in the 80s when he first became a good guy, had a big giant M on the front of it. That one was definitely bad. But I do like the look of this one. It's got the cape. Now he's got these shoulder pads which are attached to the cape and overall, especially in like a static position, it, they look good. But because they're attached to the cape, when you start posing the figure and you know, if you turn the cape a little bit, those shoulder pads are gonna move with it. So then it starts, those start to look funny. They, they have some flexibility Flexibility. The pads themselves are done with a hard plastic, but you know they are they are not firmly attached to the cape, so you can kind of bend them around and stuff. And so they don't really limit the arm movement that much. But again, like I said, when you start moving the arms around and the cape starts to move and stuff, then they don't really fit on the shoulders anymore, and it does look kind of funny. This mold, I believe, is a re. Uh, we've seen this before. It's got the hole in the back. I, I don't. I can't play. I don't remember what the first figure was that used this mold, but um, we have seen it before. The cape itself is an off black on the back here, almost with a purple tint to it. And then the underside of the cape is done with red, which I think looks really good on the figure. And the cape, of course, is done with that same kind of vinyl material we always see. You've got the hole in the back of the figure, and you've got a little peg there that you can try and stick in. It's at an angle. It doesn't stay in there very good but if you want to try and keep the cape more stationed you can try and stick that in there and then for the figure you've got pretty good muscle tone the rest of the figure is done in just a black color and then you've got the red striping throughout and you've got that both on the front and the back which I think looks pretty good uh, no real paint blemishes on my figure that I've seen and then he's got these wrist guards I mentioned before which are separate pieces that you can remove you got some sculpting detail on those and then you've also got the same kind of sculpting detail on the boots now Magnus Magneto here stands just a little bit over six and a half inches tall. Here's a comparison with that previous Magneto figure that Hasbro did. And if you were wondering, they are totally different figures. So they didn't just repaint that old Magneto figure with the new colors. Cape is different as well. So definitely it's a totally different figure. Even the helmet is different. You've got this little horns that are sculpted on the top of this one where you don't have that on, on the newer one. And then finally, here's a comparison with a few other recently released X-Men figures. So we've got the new Wolverine figure that's part of this wave, the most recent Colossus figure, which is the tallest of the bunch. We've got Rogue, which is just a little bit shorter than Magneto, and then the Jim Lee Cyclops. Okay, now for articulation on Magneto, he can turn his head to the left and to the right, and he can look down good. With the unmasked or unhelmeted head, the hair does limit some of the back movement. With the helmet, he can look back a little bit more. You can pivot the head to the left and the right a little bit as well. Arms attached with your standard ball hinge joint there at the shoulder so he can get his arm out pretty good and he's got good rotation even with those shoulder pads he's got a bicep swivel he's got a double hinged elbow so he can bend his elbow about that much he's got rotation on the hands and hinges on the hands so up and down movement with those and then he's got an ab crunch type joint so he can crunch forward about that much and then he can look back pretty good as well and you get that clicky noise there he's got a waist swivel with the legs, he can do the splits that much. He can get his leg forward good. And then he can do the leg out and back. He's got a thigh swivel. He's got a double jointed knee, so good bending there at the knee. He has a boot cuff swivel and then hinges on the feet, so up and down movement. 
and he does have ankle pivot and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Now just to give you my final thoughts on Magneto before we jump into my look at the Apocalypse Build-A-Figure. Overall, I do like this figure. I like the overall look of it. I do like the black and red. Again, it's two of my favorite colors. I think this figure is definitely an improvement over the previous Magneto figure that they did as far as the sculpting and, and detailing and everything. Now those shoulder pads can get a little bit wonky when you're trying to pose them, but otherwise, you know, I think this is a pretty solid figure and I also like the unmasked head that they included with this one. I don't really dig the purple hands that much or the lightning effects, but otherwise, you know, I think this is an overall pretty solid figure. And if you're a fan of Magneto, I think you'll definitely want to add it to your collection. Okay, so now that I've looked at all the figures in this new X-Men wave, and overall, I gotta say this is a pretty solid wave. Uh, there's some that I like better than others, but there really isn't a dud, actual dud in this wave, which is nice. And just to recap, the figures that you need to get in order to complete the Apocalypse build a figure include that 80s Mohawk Storm, Multiple Man with his X-Factor costume, Magneto in the red and black, the new Tiger Stripe Wolverine, the Jim Lee version of Sabretooth, and the Jim Lee version of Psylocke. Now once you have all six of those figures you'll be able to complete the Apocalypse build a figure and real quick before we get into this before I put Apocalypse together I just want to let you guys know that we are currently running a contest over on MarvelousNews.com the actual website where we're going to be giving away a complete set of these new X-Men figures not these particular figures since they're open an unopened set and I will put a link to the contest details that are over on Marvelous News um, basically you've got until uh, a couple weeks to enter so uh, if you want to try and win a set of these for free you should definitely check that out but anyway in order to put apocalypse together it's pretty simple so first thing you probably want to do is just take the torso section and then you can just plug the legs in make sure you have the left leg on the left side and the right leg on the right side and they should just plug in pretty easily you may have to turn them a bit and then you can take the arms and plug them in. You've got these shoulder pads, which are separate pieces and they do move up and down. So you wanna make sure you kind of lift them up and then you can just plug the arms in and they should go in pretty easily. Again, make sure you have the right arm on the right side and the left arm on the left side. And then take the head and just plug it in on the ball joint there. He does have this collar that sticks up that's done with a hard plastic. So just be careful not to like push down on that. But you know, if you get it over the ball joint, it should snap into place real easy. And then the final thing that you want to do is he's got these hose pieces. So you just want to make sure you plug them in. He's got holes here on his arms. So you plug one here on the left side into the arm. And then down here on the back, he's got another hole. And you just plug it in there. And then we'll do the one on the right side as well. And there you go. There's your Apocalypse Build-A-Figure fully complete. And I got to say, I think Hasbro's done an outstanding job with this figure. This is the first time that they've done Apocalypse, I'm pretty sure. Toy Biz did two different versions back in the day. They did a Build-A-Figure version, which was actually much bigger. That was back when Build-A-Figures were really big. And then they did a second Apocalypse as just a part of a regular release, which was more in size with this figure. But I think this is a nice update to the character and even an improvement over the Toy Biz versions, at least the regular one that they did. So starting with the head sculpt, I think this is the best Apocalypse head sculpt that we've gotten from either Toy Biz or Hasbro. I think it's an improvement over both of the Toy Biz ones, which weren't bad in their own right, but this one is just top notch in my opinion. Looks like it's straight out of the comic books. I like the teeth. He's got he's gritting his teeth, and it always looks like he's you know he's got some kind of weird uh, brace thing that's keeping his mouth open. Uh, I don't know, it's weird, but that is how it looks in the comics and everything. And that's done with a metallic blue. And then you've got some even uh, you can see like his gums there on the sides of his mouth. So I like that. And then he's got the red eyes with the black around it. So I think that looks really good. And I like the wrinkles over the forehead. And the skin tone is a gray color, which I think looks good. And then he's got this helmet piece on the back, which is done with a, a dark, almost black type plastic. So just, again, really nice detailing on that head sculpt. I think they did a really good job of nailing the overall look of the character. Looks straight out of the comic books with this one. Then he's got that big collar that's done with a hard plastic, and he's got the shoulder pads, which I thought originally you could easily take off, but it doesn't look, I'm sure you could probably get them off if you really want to, but they don't just pop off as easily as I thought they would. And again, they're done with a hard plastic, and they do move up and down some, so they do have articulation. And then you've got that metallic blue throughout most of the figure, which I think looks really good. 
and then you've got the shiny uh, black like with the wrist guards and the shoulder pads and stuff I like the belt he's got that A on his belt because you know every bad guy has got to have the first letter of their name on their costume and I like the lines that they sculpted in the A the A is actually sculpted on there it's not just painted and then I like the detailing on the side of the belt with like this black strap uh, it looks like it's actually leather I like that and then he's got looks like these are screws or something so I like that detailing he's got the black shorts on so just overall really nice detailing with this figure and then he's got the wrist guards with the hoses that stick out you got some detailing on that and again the metallic blue on the legs and then he's got the big boots that go down from his knees There's some nice detailing those are done with a, a shiny kind of a, not solid black but kind of an off black with a little bit of a, a bluish tint to it and then you've got some silver on it as well so overall, like I said, this is a really nice looking figure, a really nice update to the character. Toy Biz did a great job with him back in the day, but definitely I think this is an improvement over those previous ones. Okay, so Apocalypse here stands right about eight inches, maybe a little bit over eight inches okay, tall. And here's a comparison with the two older Toy Biz Apocalypse figures. So this was a regular release figure, and I like this one, but I do like this new one over that one. This is the Build-A-Figure that Toy Biz did originally, and this is a much bigger, you know, it's supposed to represent Apocalypse when he grows really big. Now this head sculpt is really nice as well. Uh, he doesn't have the gritting teeth, but very nicely detailed. Of course, it is a much bigger figure, but that is a very solid representation of Apocalypse. I like this one better than this one, and this one, you know, it's a tie between these two, um, but they're kind of different figures in my opinion. But, you know, when I see these figures, the thing I always think of is when are we going to get the original four horsemen nobody's ever done the four horsemen his original four horsemen which were kind of a central part of the character i do hope maybe hasbro will maybe get around to doing them they could do it as part of the rider series with their horses that they rode that would be really cool in my opinion Okay, and here's a comparison of the complete wave, including the Apocalypse Build-A-Figure. And overall, I would say these figures all scale pretty well with one another. Apocalypse is the tallest of the bunch, with Sabretooth coming in at second. And while Apocalypse's height changes and varies over the years, he's kind of a shapeshifter, so he can grow bigger and smaller. I think this is a good representation of his average size. And again, if you want to try and win a complete set of these figures, do head over to Marvelous News. Again, there is a link to the contest details in the video description. Okay, so for articulation on Apocalypse, you can turn the head to the left and to the right. Now, when you turn the head, he ends up looking into his collar, but you can still actually turn the head. You can probably actually, yeah, you can actually take this collar piece off if you want to. It just plugs into uh, the neck there with little uh, pegs and holes there, so you can actually take that off if you want to. Um, it doesn't look as good without the collar, but you know, again, if you think it gets in the way or what have you, you can take it off. And I'm pretty sure, I don't want to risk breaking these shoulder pads, but I'm sure you can probably get those off. Now with the arms, you can get the arm out pretty good. He can get his arm out about that much with the shoulder pad. If you do it anymore, you'll probably end up just popping it out of the socket. And then you can still rotate the arm kind of out and around if you want to, even with those shoulder pads. So again, it doesn't limit too much of the arm movement there. And then you have a bicep swivel. Now do be careful because you have these hooks is attached they'll just come unplugged but you know when you're moving the arm around do just be worried that you have that hose piece attached you have a bicep swivel you have a single hinged elbow so he can only bend his elbow about that much and then you don't get rotation at the elbow though you do get rotation with the hands and you do have hinges on the hands so you get some up and down movement there with the hands he has a midsection joint so he can actually look forward pretty good and then he can look back about that much as well. You've got a waist swivel with this one. And then with the legs, he can do the splits pretty good. You can get the leg forward about that much. And then you can do the leg out and back. You've got a thigh swivel. You've got a double jointed knee, so good bending there at the knee. And then with the feet, you've got hinges on the feet, so up and down movement. And he does have ankle pivot. You've got these pieces on the shoes that are separate pieces, so that'll lift up. So it doesn't actually limit the foot movement that much, which is nice. And then two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. 
Okay, so that's my review. So definitely, I really like this figure. Like I said before, I think this is probably my favorite Apocalypse figure. At least it's on par with the, the giant Build-A-Figure that Toy Biz did and definitely better than the regular size one that they did. I love the head sculpt. I love the overall paint applications with the metallic blue. I think it looks really good on the figure. I like the detailing with things like the belt and everything. So if you're a fan of Apocalypse, I think you'll definitely want to add this to your collection. The only real downside to me is, like I said, it makes me want to get the rest of those four horsemen and i really hope that hasbro maybe thinks about making that happen as for the rest of the wave you know it's a very solid wave overall with some real gems like the tiger stripe wolverine as i mentioned before we are giving away a complete set of these figures so if you want to try and enter please check out the link to marvelousnews.com in the video description also as always leave a comment let me know what you think if you're so inclined please like the video and if you haven't already please subscribe by hitting that button down below you should also hit that bell notification so you're alerted every time i upload a new video and of course you can follow me on my facebook twitter instagram and twitch accounts i have links to all those in the video description as well and until next time guys i'll catch you later